how's it going everybody welcome back to manor lords and welcome back to our quaint little village things are going okay at the moment but they could definitely be going better we're running into some issues with food specifically we have 16 months of fuel but only four months of food supplies but before we get to that there is something very exciting to talk about and that is taxation yeah we're gonna we're gonna dive into the the thrilling part of the episode right away and talk about taxation so we can click on the taxes tab after selecting the manor to set the levels of taxation taxes can boost your treasury and your influence at the cost of making your population poorer now the reason that's popping up is because in the last episode we did start to build the manor which does appear to be invisible i'm not sure why it's invisible but for that reason we're going to demolish the manor and we will rebuild it at some point probably today but before we do any of that like i said i want to deal with this food situation so there's a few things that i'm going to do to try and deal with that situation a little bit sooner than later some of them aren't going to be immediately obvious some of them might seem a little bit counterproductive but the first thing i want to do is get some more hitching posts because more hitching posts means more ox that we can use to move things around a little bit quicker and that can be really good for us so i think what we'll do is put a couple of hitching posts just in here i'm just going to get myself a nice little straight section of road right about there and i'm going to bring something straight down like this as well and what we can do is just get ourselves a hitching post hopefully right about there and right next to it as well and we're just gonna let those build now obviously we're gonna need people to work there so we're gonna need more burgage plots and that's something we're gonna have to expand a lot today is getting people in here and getting people working so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna come down to this road and i'm gonna use this road as a place to expand on a little bit because if we have a look at our fertility emmer fertility is not great around here but it is pretty good up here and pretty good down here which we could potentially use emmer by the way is just wheat i don't know if i've mentioned that but i have learned that emmer is just wheat flax fertility is well flax fertility is actually quite good in here so i maybe don't want to use this space because flax can be used to make linen which can be used to make i think gambesons which i think we need for level three burgage plots so maybe we don't build houses along here barley fertility is pretty bad everywhere except for this one little spot and then rye fertility is fantastic over here so i think instead let's use this stretch of road for a bit more zoning since it's nice and curvy as well we can play around with some stuff and i've actually played a lot of manor lords in between this episode and the last one obviously not in this uh save but i've discovered that you can create really good looking little spaces if you kind of create a road that's going to hug the back of whatever you're building so for example i actually want to redo this road for example if i bring this guy sort of through here in a nice straight line and we just do something a little bit like this we can hug this uh this entire curve basically duplicating the curve that we have over on that road we can go to about here and connect those together and it might not look great and honestly it doesn't look amazing but what we can do with that is essentially go in here we can go to our housing tab we can go to burgage plots and i can just go the entire way around this up to about there and around to there and it just nicely hugs the space and i'm kind of there for that i kind of like it i think that's going to be what 10 new plots so 10 new families that seems like a pretty good bet so we'll go for that and then i think in here i'm going to do exactly the same thing we are going to be massively growing the population here because we are going to need all of these people to do hauling and also to do quite a bit of farming so we'll do something like this we'll go down here we'll get ourselves another burgage plot uh layout like this up to here and all the way across to about there and that's going to be another 11 burgage plots so that's going to give us a plus 21 to the living space number and that's going to be absolutely fantastic so now that that's out of the way let me bring another road sort of down here and I'm gonna just sort of curve around a little bit. We're gonna play around with this, make it look a little bit more natural to, let's say about that spot should be pretty good. I think we'll bring something kind of through here as well that goes from one side of the farms to the other. So just across to there should be just fine. And I'm gonna bring something down from about here, just past the farms to about there as well. 
And the reason I want to do this is I'm trying to outline this space because I'm basically going to fill it with farms is, is what I want to do. And I want to have them looking sort of natural, sort of interesting, sort of different. Uh, I think this one can go back just a little bit to about there. And we'll then bring this kind of down and then curve it over towards this uh, road as well. So it can go right to about there. So that gives us a really nice looking space. It's going to be a nice natural space. And if we go into our farming tab and go to our fields tab, we have pretty good fertility in there, except for this bottom part, which is totally fine. So what I think I'm going to do is try and create some farm fields that are going to be really useful for us. We could go huge with this. We could do some 3.2 Morgan fields if I wanted to, but I think I'm going to just break it down a little. Well, you know, maybe I won't. Maybe we'll do, no, we'll do, we'll do, yeah, we'll do one big field here, I guess. So that's going to be 3.1. And then down this way is going to have to be slightly smaller because I do want to try and get that fertility in there. So we'll go to about here. We'll go to, I guess, about here and to about there. And that's going to give us a 1.9 Morgan field with decent coverage and fertility. And then these spaces at the back are going to be a little bit unfortunate, but that's a 0.7. And then down here, do we have anything in terms of good fertility? We have a little bit of barley actually in this space. I might do, I might do a combination of barley and emmer for this, but we'll see how that goes. And then I guess this is just going to be another field. And that gives us a really nice layout for just more natural looking fields that I absolutely adore. And then when it comes to rye, we have all of this space as well. So essentially, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself another road that's just going to come over here a little bit. We're going to curve it down just to keep things interesting and sort of curvy and nice looking. So something like something like that should be just fine. That's going to be set up as another field with really good, hopefully really good fertility. So we'll come over to here. We'll come down to about here and we'll go to there. And apparently I can't do that because, yeah, there's supplies in the way. That's all right. We can make that work. The last thing we'll do before we start building some other things is just bring a straight road across here. And I think we'll just turn that into another small field because I know there's pretty good fertility for rye in that space. So we'll build you. And that's a pretty good expansion. The only issue with this is that we have this farmhouse. There's only eight people working in it and we don't have a plowing station. Now, we could look at our upgrades. And if we upgrade to whatever the next level is, small town, we do have the opportunity to get the heavy plow. But I want to get irrigation instead because I've played a few more hours of Manor Lords. Like I said, between this episode and the last, it was over on a live stream. And droughts are no laughing matter. Droughts are actually really, really bad news for a settlement. I mean, obviously, it's a drought. It makes sense. Of course, it would be bad news. But we need to be careful and we need to make sure that we can deal with the drought if and when it comes through. So I'm going to be going for irrigation as quickly as I can. But to do that, I need to be able to upgrade my level two burgage plots to level three. And in order to do that, I need helmets and I need gambesons and I also need tavern supply. So some of that we can deal with the the gambesons, for example, if I go to the tailor's shop, I can go to you and I can say, hey, turn linen into gambesons and therefore we're not doing cloaks which is fine because we're no longer consuming berries as a uh, craftable and then the sheep are kind of pointless i suppose but i guess to be fair if i wanted to i mean let's see we have the sheep making wool we have a that's a dyer's workshop we have a weaver that can go ahead and make yarn so I guess if I wanted to, I could go to the trading post. I can go to trade. I can go to, I guess, materials. And I'm wondering, can I set this up to start exporting yarn? I absolutely can. I do need to establish the trade round, though. It's going to be 72 gold to do that. But I'd like to... Oh, I don't need to establish it. Okay. Well, in that case, I'm just going to export yarn is what I'm going to do. It's... Well, you know what? We'll keep a, we'll keep a bit of a surplus. We'll keep a surplus of maybe 10 just to be safe but then everything above that can just be exported so that we get a little bit of passive income from the sheep and then we can switch over to the gambesons and the flax and the linen and all that when we get an opportunity to do that in fact it's november so we should probably start laying out these fields sooner than later let's do 
I guess, I mean, rye is kind of the way to go, but we are going to need barley for the, for, for ale. So we'll do barley to start with, and then we'll do wheat. This one here is going to be set up with rye pretty much immediately going into fallow and then going into wheat. This one over here is not going to be great for anything. It's actually okay with rye as well. So you know what? We'll do fallow for the first year. Then we'll do wheat. Then we'll do uh, rye just to shake it up a little bit. And then this giant field is going to be rye going straight into wheat and then into fallow. And this guy over here is going to be rye, I guess, going into fallow and then into wheat. So we'll have a bit of a cycle on each field. It'll change things up and that'll keep us pretty good. We are going to need farmers, though. So what we'll do is get our hands on a farmhouse. And I'm thinking I'm going to try and get it right on this corner. Because I do think this would be a nice little spot for it. Uh, let's see. If I turn off snap to roads and I rotate this guy around, can I get it to sit really nicely in that corner? Is that going to be an option? That actually looks pretty solid. So that's what we're going to go for. And we'll get that built as a bit of a... I'm going to make that a high, very high priority. And then I'm going to say that one, I wish I could like shift click these, but we'll go for uh, highest on you. We'll go for highest on you. We'll go for highest on you and on you as well. I don't know if that makes a difference. I'm pretty sure people will move in even if the house isn't built. So you know what might actually be an idea? We'll keep those as highest. We'll come over here and make these guys uh, just high priorities because I do want those to get built as well. And then what we can do here is have all of these new people move in. All of them go to work in the farms. Some of them go to work in hauling as well. We can construct things faster if we have these hitching posts and we have ox. In fact, we have the money to get another ox. So we're going to do that immediately because, again, that's going to let us construct uh, things faster. And then the last thing I want to do before we go all out on everything that I'm doing is I want to take a look at my logging camps, my foresters, and my woodcutters because it turns out you can actually redefine the area. I mean, we we know we can do this, but you can resize this. And I hadn't been paying attention to the fact that you can do this. So for these woodcutters, I'm basically going to size this up until... I'm going to say just until it passes this little road up here. So I'm going to put it sort of in the middle of this. And I'm going to size this up until it's just past that little road. And I'm going to do the same with this uh, with this forester. So we'll scale this up right until it passes that little road. And then we'll come down here. We have this woodcutter. We're going to do sort of the same thing. We're going to scale this up until, let's say until it hits this little intersection of roads over here. So we'll bring this one way, way up. It's going to be huge, but we'll go to about there. And then this forester is going to be set up exactly the same way. Now I'm not expecting these to work. You know, I'm not expecting miracles out of these. These are really, really large areas for these guys to be working in. But I'm hoping we'll start to replant stuff around here and we'll see these guys work a bit more efficiently. And we can do the same thing with the foresters up here as well. We're going to scale this one up until, let's say, until it hits this intersection in front of the church. So right about there. Same with the forester. We're going to scale you up until the intersection in front of the church. So right about there. And then do we have anything back here? We do have another woodcutter. So again, similar story. We're going to scale you up until it hits the intersection right in front of the church. And the same story with the forester as well. A lot of these places don't actually have all that many workers as well. So we're going to want to make sure we fill all of these little buildings, especially things like the apiaries. We can get more people in here. We can get more people into this apiary down here as well. And if we can do that, that's another source of food that's only going to serve to be a good thing for us. So let's see what we're doing. We've got another ox coming in here. I think I want to upgrade these hitching posts to be stables as quickly as possible. And I think we're kind of at the point where I need to speed up the game and we just need to see how this construction is going to go. Because again, we need these fields to be working. It is, it's not a bad time to establish the fields because realistically it is November. We're going to be Hopefully, I mean, we're harvesting these things in about a year. So if we manage to sow the seeds, we're going to be doing pretty good. It's just that we need so many more people to do this. If anything, I would argue that I probably want to get my hands on another farmhouse. We have this one up here. We have this one down here. I could put one way out here. 
I don't know if that's a great idea, but it would be an option to put one out there. And I'm slightly, slightly tempted. Rye fertility is actually pretty good in that space. It's very good in this space as well. We need to bring rye the whole way through here, honestly. We really, really do. Can I get a farmhouse in here? I can get it up there, but can I can I rotate it around so it's on this road on the left? Is that going to be an option if we just swing you around a little bit? It'd be really nice if that fit. That's kind of the perfect space for it, but unfortunately it doesn't, which I guess is fine. We have this well up here as well. We have this windmill. Is that windmill even efficient? Because it has, it has a tree right next to it. I can't imagine that's the most efficient windmill. I would have to imagine that it's not. Which makes me think that I might want to get another windmill or two. I mean, right here is 90, 93% efficiency, 95% efficiency. If we move it out this way, we can get up to 96, put it in the open. You can get to 99, 100's in there as well. Yeah, we, we probably want to look at more windmill locations as well. To be completely honest, 92, 90. Yeah, there's no way this one's at 100% efficiency. Now, another thing that we can go ahead and do is start to assign more workers to things like the granary. This is going to give us more food stalls around the place as well, which is going to be very, very important for us to do. Similarly, we're going to want more people working in the storehouses, and we're actually going to want another storehouse since this one is full. So immediately, we're going to come through and try and get one of those. I've also built a new road here and a new field since we have these supplies kind of in the way. I figure that would be an idea. And I figure a new storehouse. I mean, this is for everything but food, right? This is going to have our roof tiles in here. It has clay in here. It doesn't seem to have anything to do with food. And also, we have 175 shoes in storage right now. Uh, that's a lot. That is, that is a whole lot. Can we sell commodities can we sell shoes we would need to establish a route but they are worth eight uh gold a piece which is pretty good and we are looking at our surplus goods right now which means the only numbers we're seeing for items is the amount of excess that we have so we have got 175 pairs of shoes that no one's wearing so reasonably if we can get this route for 144 gold we can establish a trade route and say, hey, sell everything over 100 shoes. That will be really, really nice to do. Especially because I can go around and get more plots like this, get more goat sheds, which will be a passive yield of hides. They can go to the tannery and we can just have basically infinite money. I like the sound of that. But again, we kind of need people to survive before we can do that. So... We need people to keep moving in. I need this farmhouse to get built down here as soon as is possible because before I even assign any of these people to work anywhere, I want them to be working in the farmhouse. I want as many people working the farms as I can. And for that reason, like I said, we are going to want another farmhouse. Now, in saying that, we have got this space. I was thinking of putting more houses in this space because it turns out that the the larger the backyard on a plot the uh the better it is for things like the vegetable gardens and i do like the idea of playing with the vegetable gardens a little bit so i might i might get a couple of lots in here with some larger backyards but i'm also looking at this space and thinking i can actually just bring a little road over and sort of down around that stone pit and just bring this guy up a little bit i'm gonna just have some fun with some curvy roads. I know this is a little bit unnecessary, but I'm I've I've seen the comments, man. I've seen people saying, "Hey, you know, the game is it's you're supposed to have the more natural looking layouts and you're building grids, man. What are you doing?" And I agree. So, this this can be another space for houses and things like that. This is going to be a really really good looking road at some points. But I think what we'll do is maybe just mark off a little bit of space here just i don't really want it to be perfectly uh straight across so maybe something kind of like this it's not going to be the largest backyard but that's okay and then i'm wondering can i get a farmhouse in there and looking at it no actually i can i need those supplies to be moved is what i need so let me come down let me rebuild this road here before we delete it so i can kind of get the same kind of curve going delete you and then yeah these supplies all need to be moved that's another reason to get more uh more stables and more ox in here 
because it's going to mean that we can start to really shift things out. And it's also hit me that, like I said, we do need that other storehouse. So I guess what we'll do is we can maybe put it in here as well. This actually wouldn't be a terrible spot for it. It's just that, well, again, it's it's storing resources like wood and uh, and stone. So maybe putting a storehouse down here would be a bit of an idea since this space is, you know, timber production. We have firewood down here. This actually seems like it'd be a really good place for it. So let's just bring a road straight through here. And let me see if I can build a storehouse on that road. I really, oh, I can, that's perfect. Yeah, storehouse right there seems like a great place for it. That's gonna help us out massively. We do have this farmhouse here as well. So let's get three people working in there. It is only December, so it's it's all right. Those people can go out and start working in the fields sooner or or later. But this, this is progress. We're also sitting on six months of food, which is fantastic. If we can keep that up, we're going to be in a really, really good place. I just, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it slow. I'm taking it slow because I don't want everybody to starve to death. And I would much prefer that they, they survive into the future and we can get into a little bit of trouble with uh, some, some fighting and some wars. And speaking of those... I almost forgot about this. We have 48 small shields right now. We have two large shields, three spears. We have one militia. We have some options for militia, though. We have the militia footman. We have the spear militia, which we have. We have the polar militia, and we have the archer militia. Now, the archer militia is particularly interesting because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, hey, turn this into a bow, bow, bowers, I don't, whatever. Turn it into a workshop where we can make bows. Bows are just made from planks, so we can get a lot of archers really, really easily. And that's kind of a big deal. So that's that's what we're going to try and do with this guy. But then if we go and look at the blacksmith, we I want to know what tools do. I have to imagine that tools are good for making your people more efficient, but I'm going to let this guy go ahead and make spears again because I do want more spear militia. When it comes to the joiner, you are already making the large shields. Let's have you make more of those as well. And basically, we're going to try our best to massively expand our armed forces. We want to be able to defend ourselves, but we also want to go out and start to attack some of the bandit camps that are out here. We have one over here. We have one up here. We have one up here. Basically, if I can go deal with the bandit camps, I can get some money from that. That's that's a really good way to to get some money. So, you know, I, I think dealing with some bandit camps is is going to be for the best. I think that's going to be a really solid idea. So it looks like these burgage plots are coming together really, really quickly, which is fantastic. That's largely going to be because for a while we weren't actually building anything because we had no one to do any building. So we have a few people doing it now, which means, as we can see, this is going really, really nicely. We also have this little storehouse over here, which does need an upgrade, but getting that to happen is going to be tricky because a lot of my planks are going to be consumed by the blacksmith and also by the Fletcher's shop. But that does mean, and we can see already, we have 19 spears, we have 10 war bows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, get me an archer militia and get me another spear militia. And basically we can fill these out as time goes by which means that if we happen to get attacked, we have range, we have uh, close quarters, we're going to be in a good little spot right there, which is kind of what we're looking for. That's kind of the goal. We also have a good number of people not working right now, and it is March, so let's get three more working in this farmhouse. And the next person to move in here is also going to be going to the farmhouse as well. Now, we are about to have 72 living spaces which is absolutely fantastic. The plus one here is for the one that's not built, which is about to be built, this guy right here. And that gives us, well, 74 living spaces. We currently have 60 families, so we have room for 14 more people to move into our little village. And speaking of our little village, all the way back in episode two, I asked for name suggestions for our settlement. And a commenter by the name of AlexH853 suggested something that I thought was absolutely perfect, which is N-E-R-D-F Nerdenfeld. I got it first try. Nerdenfeld. 
I love that as a name for the settlement. It fits so perfectly with how I usually name things in City Skylines and in Stonehearth and Banished. Nerdenfeld. Alex, thank you so much for the suggestion. Thank you, everybody that had name suggestions back in the comments of episode two. They were all mostly fantastic, but Nerdenfell just, just got the edge a little bit. I absolutely adore that as a name. I think it's absolutely fantastic. So again, Alex, thank you so much for going with the town or the village of Nerdenfeld. Now, looking at things, we still have four months of food. We did just get another farmer though, which is fantastic news. And we do have everybody out here currently plowing the fields. So hopefully we can get this all together sooner than later. Look at this one. We actually do have some wheat growing. We have some wheat growing up here as well. Rye growing up here as well, which is fantastic. So with 16 people working the fields, hopefully that's going to be enough for us. Now, have the supplies in here been cleared out yet? They have not. I really need those stones to go away so I can build a farmhouse in here. We definitely don't need more burgage plots. That's that's kind of the big thing right now. That's kind of the big takeaway is we don't need more burgage plots. I just need a farmhouse and I want to build in this space. I really do. I think that's a fantastic place for it. But we might just have to we might just have to wait. That's that's what we might just have to do until those uh, until those stones are cleared out. There's 30 of them sitting around and no one seems to be in a rush to do to uh, do anything about it. We're also sitting with basically no planks, which is kind of to be expected. But looking down here, these numbers are slowly starting to creep up. So we are basically just supplying our military with weapons, which is, you know, what we want to be doing. Oh, enemy units have been spotted, and that is quite a lot of them. I don't know if they're coming for me. I've actually got no idea if they're coming for me, but... It certainly looks like they're making a straight shot south, straight towards me. We might just never know. We <laughs> don't. I don't think my. Uh, I don't know if my. I don't know if my. I say. I was about to say allies. I don't think there's anyone else in the map that can deal with this. I think they're coming for me. I'm pretty sure that's what that means. So I'll tell you what. Let me slow the game down. In fact, let me pause because we do have three unassigned workers right now. I do want to get them working in some things before we go to war because there's actually a couple more things I need to prioritize. If we go and have a look at these farmhouses and we can look at the fields as well, you can change the priorities of fields to be looked after first. And I think it might be a good idea to have these sort of larger fields tended to pretty much immediately. So maybe this, this cluster of four right here can be the highest priority fields. They do seem to be the ones that get tended to the most. But what we can also do is go to the farmhouse and change the threshing priority. Now, the threshing priority is what determines whether or not they're going to bother turning the crops into grain. That needs to be a high priority. And the reason that needs to be a high priority is because I don't want these guys to harvest something and then turn around and be like, oh, we'll just put that in storage. I need them to thresh it pretty much immediately so it can go straight to the windmill and then be turned into flour and then be turned into bread. I'm also not sure if just the one communal oven is gonna be enough, but we'll give it a shot and we'll see what happens. So that's those priorities sort of out of the way. I think what I'm also gonna do is get some more workers in the apiaries. We do have the space for it, and that's gonna be a little bit more honey. None of this has been moved yet, so I think I'm just going to give up on my mission to get a uh, a farmhouse in there. And I think I'm just going to cave and say that we're going to build a farmhouse maybe in here instead would be an idea. I think this could work. We could do like a little market around it or something. Uh, it would be really nice to get in that space, but that's just not going to happen. So let's turn off snapping to roads. Rotate you around so you're sort of parallel to the road on the left, which is roughly about, let's say, there. And I guess we'll just do this. And that seems, that seems okay. And then what I'll do with the space beside this is go in and say, give me, just give me a marketplace, really. I I want to do something like that, something like that, and something like, I guess something like that's probably okay. We could do something with it kind of looping around though. I like that a lot. That gives us 16 stalls as well. So we'll do, we'll do that. That seems fun. So let's make you a highest priority build. And that'll be all right. 
we still have room for 11 more families to move in so we can absolutely max out this farmhouse which is fantastic news and i guess that's kind of the angle that we're gonna go for i'm also thinking we could maybe build a granary behind this it's not it's not necessary workers collect store and distribute goods using the pantry if needed they will also automatically set up stalls in the marketplace to distribute the stored goods to burgage plots having this nearby a bunch of farms seems like a really good idea it's gonna need more workers but i think i think that's gonna be a good idea so i think we're gonna go for it and we're gonna build ourselves another granary just to see what happens anyway it is fighting time. We have some decent numbers. We could be doing better, but our numbers are kind of decent. Let me go ahead and rally the troops. I'm gonna bring them up to here. We'll speed things up a little bit so they all move out. And the uh, the enemy is all the way up there. So the enemy is very much on its way. It actually looks like we might want to head over this way instead. So let me select you guys and get you over there instead. So we'll speed things up a little bit. Enemy troops are, yeah, they're very much on their way. Now, I'd like to try and be smart about this. I want my archers to... Let's see. What can we do? Stand your ground. They'll try to stand their ground. Defense is doubled, but attack frequency is halved. I don't care about that. Try to push forward. We don't need to worry about that. Give ground... Uh, you know, I think we'll just keep you balanced. And we're going to line these guys up basically right about... I'm going to say right about there. Right along the road. We're going to line the archers up. So they can move back, and then we have my spear militia. And I want these guys to sort of line up in front. So we'll line them up right about here, and that'll be great. And then we'll line the other ones up pretty much right in front as well. So something a little bit like that. Just so that we have a really good defensive line behind or in front of the archers. Now, if I was to, yeah, I can also move them around in formation. So I'm gonna move them to here is is what i'm gonna do if i move them just slightly over to the side so the archers have a uh, a pretty good shot straight through there because that looks like the line that the enemy's gonna be taking i'm also kind of wondering if i was to put these guys off to the side would that be better so that we can kind of close oh yeah the enemy's moving enemy's definitely moving let's move my guys back a little bit and try and be careful about this so let's do something like that should be all right we'll move back again and i just need to try and stay on top of these guys now we should have a pretty clear shot on these ones we should pretty much immediately see hopefully my archers start to do something there we go so the archers have started firing which is exactly what we're looking for none of the enemy guys are down yet but that's okay and i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna very quickly sort of last minute try to rotate these guys so that I can get them to, one, defend the archers, but two, also kind of close in on the enemy if we need to, which it doesn't look like we're going to need to. So let's see. We have got a group of them heading out there, which I don't love. These guys are sort of closing in on my, my unit there, which I also don't love. Let me have my archers move. Hmm. Have we got a hill? Ooh, that's The camera's getting a little bit weird. Have we got a hill around here I can play with? Uh, we have got sort of a hill here. Let me move my archers this way. So they're up here. And we'll see how that plays out. We'll see if that's something we can deal with. Now, I do have my pair of units down this way. Can I get you guys to maybe focus in on this group instead? I don't know if I can. Can I get my guys to reposition at all? So to get them to move out a little bit. This one's not even engaged right now. I need you to get down in there and get your hands dirty. Go, 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 go. Let's start clearing out these, these enemy raiders. Which apparently we just don't want to do. Which is really weird. I don't know why they don't want to... Uh, there you go. Go go ahead, get in there and fight. There you go, lads. Just get that, get that done. There we go. So we won. Which is great. That's, that's absolutely what we're looking for. My archers are a little bit spread out. So what we'll do is just grab everybody. Move them back into my territory. And then once they're in my territory, I can disband the groups... And they can all go back to their regular lives, which is absolutely fantastic. So away they go. They can do their thing. We defended ourselves valiantly. Archers are just so good. They really are. Archers are so, so good. I I absolutely 
absolutely adore them. We also have no excess military gear right now, so we're going to have to rebuild these numbers ever so slightly, but we'll get there. We'll absolutely get there. You know, I've just realized I've been talking a bunch about how I don't know what workers in certain buildings do, but it does look like it just tells you in the tooltip. So if you assign workers to work at a hitching post or a stable, they are just permanent ox guides, which speeds up logistics. So long story short, I can go in here and get another ox, which we probably want to do. We have stable space of 10 overall. We can get plenty more of them. Basically, if I just get some people working here, my logistics will just be faster. We'll move timber around faster. And I think the same goes for things like the granary. The tooltip in the granary, as we saw earlier, these guys will set up stalls, they'll move things around. It's the same with storehouses as well and stockpiles and all that kind of stuff. Basically, we do want people working in storehouses. We do want people working in granaries. It's going to help us move things around a little bit faster. And I think it should lead to just faster production of food overall, rather than having things sitting in storage forever. So hopefully we can do that. We still have plenty of room for people to move in. So let's, let's just do that. Let's just go ahead and start maxing things out a little bit in terms of workers. This storehouse down here, for example, needs people. So we'll get someone working down there. And then when it comes to all these fields, we have a yield of eight in 81 days. That'll hopefully increase. We have eight in here. We have zero in this field, which is a bit of a worry, but that's okay. Seven in here, 14 in here, eight, seven, and 34. It's not going to be a great year for for the farms, I don't think. I don't I don't think it's going to be a great year, but we'll figure it out is is what we're going to do. I also want to have a look at these burgage plots and see how we're doing. So food is fine. Clothing is fine. Fuel is fine. The gambesons are still non-existent and the helmets, we're going to have to get a trade route for those and those are going to be expensive. So when it comes to the, the Gambesons, that's a tailor's thing. And the tailor is supposed to be working on those. It's just that you are going to need linen for those. And then linen is made by the weaver, I believe from flax, if I'm not mistaken. So in fact, if we look at our industry tab here, yeah, weaver's workshop, they will turn flax into linen. So we need uh, some flax farms, essentially which is, I guess, going to be down this way because we do have that little bit of fertility in this space. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this road up to about here and I'm going to just sort of curve it over to the left a little bit so we can get something kind of interesting looking a little bit like that. And I want to see so flex fertility. That's That's a pretty good little border on that. Uh, we want to sort of come straight down through the middle of these trees as well. So something kind of like, something kind of like this is what we're going to go for. And I'm going to try again to sort of just border this space as best I can with uh, with some roads. And we'll see if we can't maybe, uh, I don't know, get something kind of interesting here. We'll bring the roads down this way as well. This will give us a quick little way through this entire space into our settlement. So that seems pretty good. That actually seems like a really good amount of space for what we're looking for. And then I'm wondering if maybe we want to come off of here as well. And we'll just sort of cut through this space a little something, something like this. And I think that'll be pretty good. We'll curve it over maybe to uh, right about right about here, I think is going to be a good spot as well. So that's going to be a linen field or a flax field rather. <laughs> linen field uh yeah flax field right there and then up here we have really good fertility in this forest as well so i think what we'll do is continue this road sort of straight up here we'll follow this one little contour line that we can see to roughly that spot i think and we can continue this admittedly it doesn't have to just stop there because the fertility runs out we can bring this sort of straight through uh which i guess is is what we're going to be doing and where do I want to take this? I guess we can just run it right past all of this up to my existing road. And it'll just be like a weird little path through the uh, through the forest. That seems completely fine. And then where else did we have the flax fertility? It sort of comes off this road. So let's bring that road up to... I'm going to say roughly here. 
so we'll bring you kind of straight out we'll have a bit of a bit of a sharp corner on this thing that's okay we'll bring this kind of down sort of towards the houses seems pretty good and we'll just maybe i don't want to go straight down to there that's actually you know what we'll bring this back a little bit we'll, we'll curve it upwards first and then maybe bring it down or hmm you know what let's let's make this a bit simpler let's make this a bit a little bit simpler i'm just gonna bring a road along the back of these houses and uh we'll we'll just have it link up with that because that's just gonna be so much easier so right up to about there seems fine i don't love this weird little space here so we'll kind of make a a little something something out of it and this is basically going to be where the uh where the field goes we'll bring this down we'll bring it up like this and we'll bring it over to sort of run into uh to this road right about there so yeah that's gonna be i mean it's not all good for flax but it's good enough this is gonna be really good as well and so let's just go ahead and say you know a new field right here for one so right about there and then another new field is gonna go right in here as well so we'll get you two built we're gonna say give me it's only 27 percent. that's really not much but we'll do we'll do some uh some flex and we'll do some flex and i'm thinking i'm gonna keep them fallow next year in fact let's do fallow there let's do flax right there and if i can get a third field we can alternate and so one of them's always growing but we'll do this for now in fact let me just double check something flax fertility you know what i think we can do another one i i do i think we'll do another one we'll build another farmhouse as well and we'll just go kind of nuts with it so let me just bring a little field out into this space as well doesn't have to be anything uh anything too fancy but we'll just bring something through like this we'll get ourselves a field set up so we'll just double check yeah flex is pretty fertile uh in there so bring this all around oh, this is gonna be gonna be a whole thing there's what i'm looking for that is taking away a lot from the trees that i wanted to uh wanted to grow in here but we'll figure that out i'm sure that's to that's totally gonna be fine rotate the crops around year three is going to be flax so we have uh let's change this so year one is the top field year number two is going to be the middle field and then year three is the bottom field and that should be pretty solid that's going to be a really nice amount of flax that should turn into linen pretty quickly which can turn into gambesons and that's going to keep my people relatively happy that will give them a supply of those which means we're closer to level three burgage plots we just need to figure out the tavern thing and realistically if it comes down to it i might just import it it is expensive it's a really expensive trade route but we might just have to import it now in other news it looks like we're starting to see a surplus of the war bows which is not the worst thing in the world but we don't want to be consuming more uh wood more planks than really we want to be consuming so i'm going to pause the fletcher which means that more planks are going to be available for the blacksmith to finish up the uh not the blacksmith sorry the uh what do you call it the joiner the blacksmith actually has a surplus of spears as well so we're going to pause you so that we're not consuming those planks as well and then the rest of the planks can go to the joiner we can make the large shields and that means that we can max out we actually only need two more large shields by the looks of it to max out the two spear militia once those are made we can go ahead and pause the joiner as well and that's going to free up those planks for whatever else i want to do i do want to upgrade this storehouse for example so being able to do that would be really really nice and also just being able to defend ourselves you know we had a good number of enemies come down here and try to attack us and we seem to have held up really nicely so i'm feeling i'm feeling pretty confident i'm feeling pretty good at the moment which is great and i'm thinking we currently have if i add you to there that is i want to say 20. i think we have something like 20 farmers right now which is hopefully gonna gonna be good for us we're sitting on two months worth of food but this field has 34 rye in 29 days 34 in 29 days this only has eight which is unfortunate but it is also not really fertile so that's expected 65 in 29 days 47 in 29 days 34 19 and 20 this one's barley but again that's fine so assuming everything works out we're gonna have a really good september harvest 
and I want to see if the extra granary staff that I've got working around the place, I want to see if they're going to help us out. I want to see if they're going to get stuff into this windmill that little bit quicker. I want to see if they're going to get stuff into the communal oven that little bit quicker. Because if they can do that, then this whole situation with there not being enough food should be okay. And we should be able to figure it out and we should be able to survive no problem. I also want to double check. This little marketplace is now full, which is interesting. If I click on you, does it actually tell me what you've got uh, got in terms of coverage? Is that, I, I could swear I saw a bunch of things highlight green there for a second, but I, I don't know. Market supply and demand. This view doesn't show physical locations of goods, but instead shows their availability. Burgage plots nearest to the marketplace have the best availability of goods and therefore can be upgraded faster. It creates a cascading effect houses in the outskirts will always have a worse time upgrading so okay so that's that's actually really interesting that i can hover over these and see sort of how things are going that's quite cool so this market's full this market is also full which means i would assume yeah this one down here is starting to uh get filled in as well which is very exciting i'm kind of okay with that and would you look at that it is september which means we do have this harvest going on. We can see all this stuff going into storage in the different fields. We've got a lot of stuff sitting around. It would be really nice to see all of that get moved that little bit quicker. I don't know if crops actually go into a storehouse or if they go into a granary. I don't know. I mean, by the looks of it, I think the farmers just pick it up and bring it back here. So. I'm assuming that's kind of how it works. And we do have a lot of rye in this farmhouse. No threshing going on right now. But admittedly, I do have these fields set as high priorities. And it does look like these fields are being treated as high priorities. So we'll see how that plays out. And we'll see if we end up with a really... Let's see how these numbers are going. Oh, that's fantastic. That is fantastic. That is what we want to see right there. Now, we do have some complaints going on. These guys don't seem very happy because they don't have a food supply, which is to be expected. They have got a market here. They have got a market there. There's a market down here. These guys just don't have a market right next door, which is apparently what they're complaining about. Interesting. They'll be fine. They'll they'll figure it out, I'm sure, is, is what they'll do. At least I, I hope that's what they're going to do. Now, looking up this way, there's still no threshing going on, which... I I think what happens is they will folk I think the priorities are basically they will harvest first and then they'll go and do the threshing and then they'll go and start sowing the or plowing and sowing the fields again. I think that's kind of how it works. At least I hope that's how it works. I'm really nervous only having two months worth of food. But again, there is a ridiculous amount of stuff in here ready to be turned into uh into good things. So Here's hoping for the best. There's nothing in this farmhouse which is worrying. There's nothing in this farmhouse which is worrying. But I think, at least I imagine, or at least it seems, that they're bringing everything back here. So I don't, I don't really know what's going on. Anyway, we have five unassigned workers right now. I want to make sure they're doing their thing. Let me, let me see how we're doing. So we have 20 large shields right now. That would say to me that my armies are looking pretty good. Let's have the joiner pause their work. That'll give us a really nice supply of planks, which is absolutely fantastic. And so with those, I want to upgrade this storehouse because I think that's going to be really important. And I'm also thinking I might, I might build another couple of burgage plots. Nothing crazy, nothing huge, but I want to build, let's see, I want to get something in here. And the reason I want to get something in here is because if I do build something in here, I can give them some really large backyards and I can set those backyards to be uh, vegetable gardens. And again, the larger the plot, oh God, the camera, the camera does get weird sometimes. Uh, but the larger the plot or the larger the vegetable garden, the more effective it is. So I think we're going to have 74. We've got 74 living spaces. What if I brought that up to 80 in total? So that right there would be six more. And that's at least three, maybe four. I think that's what we're going to do. I think we're going to build these. We're going to bring that up to 80 living spaces. And I think that's going to be good. 
And then looking in here, it does look like this farmhouse is getting a really good supply of rye, which makes me really, really happy. That is absolutely fantastic. Are we finally seeing flour production? We are not. We're still not seeing any grain production, so... Yeah, we really are running out of food. If you guys would... I, I don't want you to do that. I want that... No, that needs to be a lower priority. It, be, it can be a very high priority, is, is what it can be. I'm really... I'm really getting a little bit concerned by the fact that you guys don't seem to want to do any thrashing over here. That's that's kind of a problem. I'm also thinking I can limit their work area if I really wanted to. So I could set it so this farmhouse kind of covers these three fields. This one covers sort of these three and this one covers these three. It's tempting. It is definitely, it is definitely tempting. But I think I'm just going to leave them alone for the time being. So we have zero food now, but we have apparently started the process of threshing this all into grain, which means that we should be starting the process of creating flour, which means that we should be starting the process of making bread. So we, this is, we're down to the 11th hour is where we are. We're down to the 11th hour and it's not good. But my hope is that we can start moving things around really quickly and my hope is that because we have more people working in the different granaries and because we have more people working in the different storage places, my hope is that we can make this, make this happen. My hope is that we can survive. We do have grain in these granaries as well. So I'm thinking that maybe having this granary right here is going to serve a really good purpose for us. We have a lot of flour in here already as well. And then down here, I'm really hoping, there we go. So we're starting to get flour deliveries to the communal oven. We have bread slowly going out. I hope that's good enough. I hope, I hope that does what I want it to do. I'm, I'm really hoping for the best on that one. I'm also curious. Workers will hunt wild animals and produce meat and hides. I don't know if we need two people working in here because uh, there's only so many animals to hunt, you know? I, I don't know if we need more people in there. Uh, we could potentially get more people in the apiaries, though. That might not be the worst idea. Again, I don't know if it increases efficiency. I really don't know how that, that necessarily works, but it might not be a bad idea. At the very least, let's get a couple of vegetable gardens in here. Because, again, the larger the plot, the better the vegetable garden. And given the fact that we have no food, we're going to want some good vegetable gardens is what we're going to be wanting. 246 flour is is kind of wild though. That's that's actually really good. There is some grain sitting in storage down here. So there's still a little bit more to go there. Looking at the communal oven though, it seems really slow. That or it's just constantly getting flour and it's immediately being turned into things, but we are now getting complaints of people being hungry. So yeah, we we really might want to do something about that. I'm almost tempted to move. I, I think we need a different windmill. I think that's one thing we need is a better, a better windmill location and maybe just, I don't know, a, a communal oven next to a granary that's next to that windmill. I mean, this space still hasn't been cleared out as well. That's really starting to annoy me. Let me have a little bit of a look at farming. Let me have a look at a windmill. In here would be 97% efficient. I just can't get it in there, which is really unfortunate. If I snap it to roads, we can get 98% efficiency down here. It does seem like a good place for it. 95% efficiency here. This should be a good place for it. It's right next to a farmhouse. It's really frustrating that it doesn't seem to be the case though. I also don't know if we actually need another communal oven to be fair. I mean, as it stands, this one is sort of getting there. I guess my only thinking is that we only technically have three market stalls that are distributing uh, the, the bread. So maybe, hmm, let's give it a shot. You know what? We'll give it a shot is, uh, is what we'll do. We'll put a communal oven right about here and that'll be fine. We have a little market right here, which is fine. We have these supplies right here that need to go away. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself, I do really want another windmill. I was, I was kind of thinking of putting it in here, but again, we can't do it with the supplies there and we can't do it. We don't have the space for it anyway. 
I could sort of put up here. That would definitely be a bit of an option. 98% efficiency is really... I have to assume that's better than what we have. So you know what? Let's just do it. We'll do the windmill right there. And I'm going to just bring some roads around this. So it's nicely sort of... Nicely defined, I guess is what we'll go for. A nicely sort of defined space for the windmill. So that, you know, we don't build anything silly right next to it in the uh, the near or the distant future. And there we go. We have ourselves another windmill in its own little plot, which looks completely fine. We also have this communal oven, which is working. We are seeing bread supplies climb a little bit. We do now have a month's worth of food, and we also have 285-ish flour still in storage. Now, admittedly, the bread that we make over the course of the next few months does have to see us through until the next harvest and the next threshing. Hopefully, that's what it's going to do. Hopefully, that's going to keep us good. This field is currently yielding nothing, and it's got 160 days to go. This one's going to be fallow. This one's going to be doing 25 with 160 days to go, which is actually pretty good. This one is looking at 25 as well. This one's looking at 38. These guys are fallow, and this one is looking at 1 with 0% fertility. So I think we probably want to swap this out for wheat, which is also 0% fertile right now, but we, we've kind of completely drained the fertility of that field so it's it's gonna need to sit fallow for next year but we are bouncing back we're up to two months worth of food now a lot of that is bread a lot of that's gonna be bread but that is that is good that is what we're looking for that's i'm feeling a little bit better even though we are we are still in desperate times i am feeling a little bit better about our circumstances we also have a barley field up here which is looking like it's doing all right Still getting res uh, resources stolen by bandits. We can go out and deal with those at some point. I'm really not in any major rush to uh, to do something about that. And then the brewery. I don't know if the brewery is making anything. We have we have got a brewery. <laughs> I just they don't seem to be doing much. I guess food supplies are also pretty low, but we are seeing people get gambesons. So I think realistically the next steps that we need to take are set up some trade routes to bring i i'm gonna hmm, i don't know if i want to just bring in the ale or if i want to let's have a look here we have some choices we could import barley it's gonna be 12 gold per or we could just import i guess the ale itself for 18 which is a lot that is a lot of money but i'm i'm definitely tempted we could probably also look at exporting other things as well. Uh, I'm sure we've probably got... Do we have any leather? Oh, I'd have to establish a route for that, unfortunately. We have dyes. We actually have a really huge surplus of dyes, and they are worth something. Let me set you guys up to export, and let me export something like... Let me, let me have a surplus of like 50. And I'm also going to say that I'm still... I haven't turned the dyer's workshop off. So even though we aren't using the dyes, we were still making them. Which is really not good. So hopefully uh, hopefully we figured that out. Hopefully that's not going to be the case anymore. And then the person that was working there... Honestly, let's have you go work in... I don't think I need him work in the, in, the, in the windmill. I think we'll go for another granary worker. So now that we're sitting with four months worth of food supplies, we're basically back to where we started today. But that number seems like it's been climbing rather than going down, which it was for the most part as we went through today's episode. We are in the middle of June right now with four months supplies, so we will have a harvest just around the corner. It's a couple of months away, which is completely okay. But I think the last thing I want to do before we go and wrap things up for today is I want to get a couple more burgage plots in here because we are going to need more people working in communal ovens, more people working in granaries and storehouses. We are going to need more people. We probably want to max out the foragers and max out the wild animal hunters as well. So let's get ourselves, it's a bit of a risk, but we'll get ourselves a few more burgage plots just in here to fill up this space which seems like a nice little area for it and i want to fill up this space as well since it is you know right there so we'll fill up you and i'm also kind of wondering can i maybe get a house in here i absolutely can get a burgage plot right there 
I don't know if I'm going to do that, though. I think that could reasonably just be a market. And markets do seem like something we're going to want a few of, so... Let me, let me come down to here, come over to here, and up to, uh, up to that corner. And that's just going to be a nice little market for us, which is going to be a pretty good place, honestly. Definitely seems like a good place for a market. We, oh, look at this road. Look at you. I really should have been building on curves from the get-go. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what possessed me to be like, oh, we're going to build a grid. We're going to play this look at city skylines. And I just want to point out, these are all building so quickly because we do now have a really good number of ox going around moving all of the timber that we need for these burgage plots. So having these guys hauling, I think is going to be huge. I think it's going to be a really, really good change to Nerdenfeld, having all these people in the granaries, just having all these ox going around. I just, I just think we're going to find ourselves in a really, really good place. The more we keep people moving around and we keep the... Just all of the hauling businesses up and running, really. So that's that's kind of my plan. Like I said, we want to get people in the granaries. We want to get people in the ovens. I, I think we'll maybe focus on the communal ovens a little bit. In fact, let me take you out of there. Let me put you in the windmill. I know I said I wasn't going to put too many people in the windmill, but we'll go for the windmill just because we can. And looking at this, we're going to have space for 89 people. We currently have 81. So we have room for eight more to come in here and to, well, go ahead and get to work. Anyway, with September just around the corner, I want to take a look at these fields. We're looking at 19 wheat. We are looking at 46 wheat. We are looking at 33. We are looking at 60. And then we're looking at one rye, which is fair enough. This field, this, this field is, yeah, not in a good way. But that's good. That's still a really good harvest of wheat. That's still going to go towards making grain. That's still going to go towards flour and then bread. We have two communal ovens now as well, which is hopefully going to mean that we end up in a really, really good place. We also actually have some excess, uh, some surplus gambesons as well. So that should mean that all of my level two burgage plots are now supplied with those, which means that hopefully in the near future, we do, I'm sure, have a surplus limit on the gambesons, right? If we have a look in here, yeah, it's a limit of six. I'm going to say limit that to two so that we're not buying any more of those, which means that we should start to save money. We can turn that money into more trade routes. And by the looks of it, I think we do maybe have a bit of a harvest going. Yeah, it looks like all the farmers are coming over to start working in the fields, which is absolutely, absolutely fantastic news. We also happen to have another unassigned worker that I can put to some good use. I did go ahead and get a couple of people down in these foresters huts because I'd like to start filling in this space. But I guess let's get you into... I don't know if I need you in there. We could put some in the granary. We have got some people working down in these storehouses. You know what? We'll get another one in there just to make sure that we have really good uh, coverage on everything. And then up this way... We'll do the same thing, get another one into that storehouse. I also don't think we're building anything right now. So you know what? We have 86. We have capacity for 89. Let's just put you in there. You can maybe eventually make yourself a good old uh, marketplace. But by the looks of it, harvesting is going really, really well. We're down to only two months of food, but we have got some, we have got some surplus in here. We have got some supplies in here. So I think once the harvesting's done, Hopefully, it's not going to take as long as it took last year. Hopefully, that means we're going to see... I mean, they are clearing these fields. It's like watching locusts go to work. Hopefully, that means that thrashing is going to start sooner than later. And hopefully, that means we're going to see some really, really good food supplies come through here. But I'm going to leave it there for today. I keep, I keep talking. I keep finding things to do. And I keep not ending the episode. So we'll find out in the next one whether or not my little plan here has... Uh, being successful but the looks of it they're bringing a bunch of stuff down here as well though which is great so yeah we're gonna leave it there for today thank you so much for watching everybody it has been an absolute pleasure as always and as always i'll see you next time Bye bye